I grew up here in San Leandro. My mom worked as a school teacher. My dad worked for the one big tech company in town. So my brother and I were very hyper-local to San Leandro. I went to college in Wellesley. I did summers abroad in Beijing, in Costa Rica, India, Tibet, and then ended up in Australia for graduate school looking at environmental science work. I'm the type of person that wants to give back to the community, give back to the world. So there was always that kind of motivation. It took over 120 applications. A lot of interviews, but I landed in the Civic Spark AmeriCorps program. I ended up with the city of Emeryville to help them create their climate action plan. In 2019, my predecessor here in San Leandro retired and really actively recruited me. And then I've been working at the city since then. As a sustainability manager of the city, my role is to implement the Climate Action Plan. So this is a document that has been developed in collaboration with community, with uh, different partners, uh, agencies, and then approved by the council to really help direct us to meet our climate goals, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, looking at adaptation, building electrification or green transportation. Resilience at the local level is extremely, extremely important. Even though climate change is a global phenomenon, it will impact local communities in different ways. And so we want to be really specific about how it's showing up in a particular community and then from there to be able to come up with the hyper-local response to meet the needs of a community. Here in San Leandro, we're looking at extreme heat. We're looking at wildfire smoke. Eventually, we'll be looking at sea level rise. In the process of developing the Climate Action Plan, I think the key is really to get as much community input as possible. I did the 120 community meetings. That then helps us to make sure as many voices are heard in the process. When we're thinking about the type of actions that we want to take, we're leveraging a lot of really, really rich data on where low-income or environmentally polluted areas are, where are there no trees, where are the sea level rise might be. And all of that then informs us to say, OK, where are people going to be hit first and worst and hardest? We got a $1.5 million grant to plant trees in San Leandro. So today is the very first tree planting for a partnership that Common Vision has with the city of San Leandro to plant 5,000 trees across the next two to three years to get people participating in the planting of those trees, in the maintenance of those trees, in modeling that behavior for young kids and getting them to do it. That's my favorite picture of resilience. We all need each other. And so if we're working in the soil, we're planting trees, we're also hand to hand, and we get acquainted and we get familiar and we learn that we're not all so different from one another. And it's those kinds of understandings between people that will build resilient community. Get this dirt ready? One, two. Let's get this standing up yeah. more straight. One of the other projects I lead is the Resilience Hubs. We're looking to partner with organizations in the community and have them serve as hubs where they already have established relationships and trust with among the community. This, I mean, obviously it's dead now, but mm. there's potential for like the 100,000 tree initiative to have um, this built into a garden, do some sheet mulching, maybe having some like worm bins or like compost area. For the past year, we've been working with Faye and the city to transition our entire organization into more of a resilience hub, putting on the lens of resilience and seeing all of the services we offer through that lens. Our members are from multiple generations of families. So we have elderly folks who, in the event of a wildfire or an earthquake or an emergency, they might lose their power they might not have the ability to plug in their medical devices. We're essentially forming a network that we can use to leverage resources in the event of an emergency. My connections among the community and also with different community partners is probably the greatest asset that I bring. What I love most about Faye is that they are very, very intentional about all they do particularly relative to climate 
environmental work and justice. What drives Faye is a lot to do with equity, making sure that everyone is brought along in this sustainability journey. The through line for my work as an artist, a community organizer, soon building manager, policymaker, is for me, the three pillars that I kind of orient my life around, community, connection, and creativity. I see a world where we all have access to clean water and air and, and food, to housing that is affordable in a community that is walkable and bikeable. We don't have to live 50 miles or more from where we're working, that we have a really strong local economy where we're building what we need, that we have a really vibrant community where people know each other and can take care of each other. That is the vision that I work towards where we can really center joy and well-being, and I hope that comes to fruition.